Hi, I'm dropping in today to share about how I tapped into my real life mind body integration tools to keep my nervous system even in an unusual but real life situation. A few days ago, I shared around how I used a lot of the tools that I have like body rolling and cupping and taping and so forth to help my body enjoy the activities of snowshoeing and cross country skiing that I love, even though my SI joint was cranky. Well, the next day I had no idea that this was going to happen, that I would need these deep uh, reservoir of tools that I have, but I went back out snowshoeing and I actually got lost in the woods. And of course, my cell phone GPS was not uh, working with me. It completely shut down and I couldn't get any reception where I was at. So I wanna share the tools that I used because I think it's just interesting and maybe it's something that you could use down the road as well. I felt pretty clear headed when I realized that I was actually lost but I wanna tell you how I helped myself stay in that very clear-headed state so that I could figure out how to get out of the situation. And just a little backstory, I do snowshoe and cross-country ski by myself because my family, my husband and daughter are big downhill skiers, which I am not, I'm not good with heights. I'm sure it's a sensory integration situation as we OTs would think about. And I will go to the lovely trails that are near the ski resorts. In this case, it was Cabra Fay. And I usually stick pretty close to the cross country trails because I don't have a wonderful sense of direction. It's better than it used to be. But I felt pretty empowered having my GPS on my phone. And so this day I decided to go out and I was really feeling invigorated and like I wanted to go for a 60 to 90 minute snowshoe uh, activity experience. And I thought, I'm gonna feel great even if I get further back, I'll then just have to make sure I get back and it will push me to work harder. Because if you've never done it, snowshoeing is actually a great workout. And so I went out and I just kept following the trail, but then I would see these large pastures of beautiful untouched snow, which is what you want when you're snowshoeing because it's harder when you get to the fresh snow and it makes it more vigorous. So I would go for a bit, I'd find these wonderful pastures, and I said to myself, I am going to use the snowshoe tracks to come back because I didn't think anyone else had really been snowshoeing for the last few days. I saw lots of cross-country ski tracks, but not the snowshoes, and I told myself, I have my GPS. So I got pretty far out, and then I got up to the Manistee National Forest, and I was delighted, did a little forest bathing, went in there, and then I uh, started to head back. And I thought I was doing pretty well. I crossed a few of the bridges that I've crossed before, and then I crossed over on the way out. But then after a while, I realized I wasn't getting back to the trail that I had followed, and I was seeing fences and property that looked different. It's hard to tell where you are with the snow. And I definitely learned a lot from this. I'm going to get better gear for when I'm out by myself, a GPS that is not reliant on cell service, for example. So I realized that I was turned around and I thought, okay, I can handle this, but I wanted to make sure I stayed really grounded and I didn't want to get into that fight or flight fear and panic mode. So I made sure to do earth buttons, which you may have learned in some of my workshops or I shared it on Work In Wednesday before. And earth buttons are very grounded. I needed to feel like I was connected to nature and to earth and to allow it to lead me to where I was going. So then I had some areas that I went to and some different trails that I um, had looked at and that looked familiar and I could go right or I could go left. And I decided to do some muscle testing on myself to determine which way to go. And I felt pretty confident in that. And I'm grateful I did because eventually I found my way out of those pastures and those very wide open sort of barren areas. And I made it to uh, a rural road. So I got into this rural road and I felt pretty comfortable. And by this time I had reached my family via phone but I could not get GPS to allow me to get into any sort of map system. It just kept saying root cannot be found. So I was walking on this main road and 
trying to follow GPS when I finally got it to work, but it tried to turn me down a road that wasn't there. It said, turn right for this particular road, which was in someone's yard. And these are yards with lots of property. Of course, I don't know those people. And this is the kind of area that if I went on someone's property, they might decide to shoot me. So I decided not to do that. I kept walking on the road, but I couldn't find where I was. And then I lost GPS again. So at this time I was doing some cross crawl, which you've probably seen in some of my videos before, just to keep myself integrating right and left brain. And it was a nice way to keep moving. I mean, I, I wasn't cold at first, but after a while of stopping and looking around and really thinking, I did start to get cold um, because I wasn't doing the vigorous activity of the snowshoeing anymore. And finally, I got to an area and uh, was talking with my family. And by this time, you're probably wondering why they didn't come looking for me. But I had the car keys, of course, because the ski resorts you can't go into right now. So I had the car keys. So when I was done snowshoeing, I could go back to my car and just warm up a little bit. So they didn't have a car. They were trying to ask people. She thinks she's in this area. How can we help her? Finally, I kept walking far enough and I got to where GPS was working and thankfully I figured out and looked ahead on the map, which I don't normally always do in real life, but I said I better look at this because my cell phone battery was diminishing. And soon after I did that, I definitely lost my cell phone battery. So I kept walking and I finally figured out how one of the roads on GPS was mismarked and I, I finally figured and really felt that I was going in the right direction and I again muscle checked and got confirmation. And then I was walking and walking and walking and all said I was gone for about three and a half hours and I was planning to snowshoe for 60 to 90 minutes. So I was gone a fair bit longer than I'd planned and by the end I was getting tired and just I think more mentally tired than anything and just wanting to get home. We were supposed to drive the three hours home that day from our time up north and there was one point where I saw an area we had discussed that morning on our way into the ski area. It was the snow cats that groom the snow and my daughter was commenting on them. And so I was so excited to see those. I knew I was on my way and I made it back and I was super grateful. And I really kept myself composed so that I could get out of the situation. And I also kept thinking about my daughter and how I wanted to be a positive role model for a situation like this, to talk about it being a learning experience and to come to her from a place of feeling grounded because I knew she would be upset and she was. And so we got in the car and got on our way home for our three hour trek. And she had lots of questions, which of course we talked about. She was disappointed that I didn't see any bears, but I was not. And this is where the real integration happened. This is where I really had to use my tools because I could feel since I had made it through, my nervous system was beginning to process and that fight or flight, which I'd kept pretty much at bay, but I had that high alert, that fight or flight was kind of coming through as if to say, you've made it through, now the magnitude of this is really hitting. So the first thing that I did in my car as I was a passenger, my husband was driving, I just went into the hookup. Just that very simple hookup position from Brain Gym. And if you want to learn about the cross crawl and the hookup and some of these other things, go ahead and sign up for the Inner Resources free support video series because these are going to be in there. And then, oh, and a lot of people were asking me, were you hungry? And I actually was because I was taking my snowshoeing as my morning work out or work in as I like to call it. And so I hadn't eaten yet because I didn't want to exercise in a full stomach. So I was pretty hungry. And you know me, I love my veggies and everything, but I actually got in the car and right away I ate some potato chips. I just wanted the salt. I wanted the crunch. I wanted the fat. So I ate some potato chips. And then I ate an apple and some things like that later. And uh, when we arrived home, I got in our sauna because I was pretty cold, pretty chilled to the bone. So I got into the sauna and I did some further work. I did some calming work for my nervous system. Again, more of the hookup. I did more earth buttons. I actually did some emotional clearing with the viscera with the organs and really scanning my body and finding what was showing up because different organs relate to different things. And one of the things that at first surprised me was that I had the lungs coming up and lungs are about grief. 
And I wasn't grieving that that happened. Um, I knew that I would get out. I knew everything was going to be okay. I really knew that deep in my uh, fibers of my being on a gut level too. But I think what I was grieving is that I couldn't call and tell my dad about the situation. My dad has Alzheimer's and he wouldn't be able to engage in a conversation. In the past, I would have called him and I would have told him all about it. And I'm sure I would have gotten a lecture about how I shouldn't have gone by myself. You always have to have a buddy system, but he probably would have reminded me of things that he taught me earlier in life about nature. So I really had to look at and sit with and honor that grief and be with that for a bit. Um, I also did the fear paralysis tapping exercise, which again is in that inner resources video series if you're interested in that. But the fear paralysis reflex comes up when our body is in that fight or flight or when we're trying to stave off the fight or flight. And so the fear paralysis tapping experience really helped me doing that in my sauna. And I've done it every day since then. And I also made sure to honor and support and hold space for my daughter's emotions because she had a lot of fear. So I did some fear paralysis tapping on her, which she's had me do a lot. Um, and I just really honored the spaciousness that I needed really for her and for me and for my husband. My husband was great throughout the whole situation, but really tried to just be with the experience and, and process it. And I also thought about, actually my husband suggested one of my daughter's classmates, his mother is an amazing outdoors woman and she teaches winter orienteering classes. And I definitely think I need to sign up for one of those because it's really hard to find your way when all the snow looks the same. So I'm sharing this again so you can know that there are tools from the mind-body work that I do that we can call upon when we're in a stressful, intense situation. And I was very grateful to have those tools. I hope you found this helpful. And let me know if you have any questions or also any suggestions about getting lost in the woods. <laughs> Thanks for watching.